Hello, massage nurse. Today I'm going to be doing part one of um, pathologies of the skeletal system. I'll do part two in a couple of days. And before I start, I just want to remind you guys that anytime there's acute inflammation to any of the body parts from your client, that that is a contraindication that you stay away from it until the inflammation has gone down. You know, they can apply ice or follow their doctor recommendations but you that is a contraindication so be very careful and if you uh you know if you can talk to your client before they come in especially if it's a new client just to make sure that you know about that pathology you remember google is your new mother you can just research it real quick so with that being said uh adhesive capsulitis is the first one that i'll be talking to you and adhesive capsulitis is also known as frozen shoulder. You know, all the uh, tissue around there gets really fixed around the uh, glenohumeral joint and uh, it's decreased range of motion. So that usually happens with uh, prior injuries or arthritis or bursitis or scapular injuries and they come back to haunt you many years later. It's common between the ages of 40 and 60, mainly for females. So you want to make sure that the client is comfortable. You're working, wait until the inflammation goes down before you do any kind of range of motions, especially. So you, you might uh, want to recommend MCE, which would be the, uh, to move it. You know, the best thing to do is really to move it, to compress it, you know, and to elevate it you know, to make sure that they rest it. So one of the things that I recommend for my clients to do is to put their arm against the wall in the shower because they have the support of the wall and they could just walk up the wall supporting that arm and take it as far as they can while it's being supportive. You know, because if the arm is just loose for them to move it, it's painful. So remember, all we can do is just make recommendations and you all, you you want to do a passive range of motion remember that passive means that the client it's always referring to the client anatomical position or, or passive or active range of motion that you're always talking about the client so passive means that the client is not doing the movement you're doing the movement for them with their guidance make sure you don't go above their pain tolerance and that you are maybe able to do some range of motion after you've you know, release some of the uh, the muscles. So uh, be very careful with this one because it is very painful. So if they want a full body massage and they're still very swollen, you might want to stay away from that shoulder until, like I said, until that inflammation has gone down. So number two would be the Baker cyst. And this is an accumulation of the synovial fluid behind the knee. It starts coming out and it, Again, it's also uh, one of the indications is people that have had prior knee injuries. It's uh, called a popliteal cyst. You can feel it. It, it can be as big as, you know, as, as, a, as a small lime because I have had clients with that. You want to make sure that your client is comfortable and put a bolster behind their knees, especially when they are supine because you want to keep them comfortable. And uh, another, uh, one of the, the things that causes it is a meniscus tear, semitendinosis, membranosis, also pulling tightness of the, the insertions of those muscles. And um, let me see what else. You want to avoid the area. Remember that the popliteal is behind the, tea, the knee and you have blood vessels going through there. So you don't want to put pressure. You don't want to burst that bursa. And you want to just work the muscles around there, the attachments around there. Keep the client, um, keep the client comfortable. So that will be the uh, Baker cyst. Bursitis. Now, bursitis is inflammation of the bursa. Remember all synovial joints, which are the uh, mus the muscular, the skeletal muscle joints. All of those have a bursa. So when a lot of it has to do with repetitive motion. A lot of it has to do with the pressure that the, that the um, joints can handle. And let me just explain to you a little bit like what I uh, explained to my students is like, the joints are made to handle so much weight, correct? So let's say you have a 200 
from man or woman. And that pressure, they put one and a half times their body weight on those joints. So it would be like 300 pounds on their joints. For every pound that you uh, that you have, you put four pounds of pressure on that the knee joint and six pounds of pressure on the hip joints because you have more muscles there. So let's say that you're 10 pounds overweight. That's 40 more pounds of pressure on your knee. So it, the, the weight also has to do with the joints and a lot of times why people get bursitis, you know, inflammation. Usually that happens too with overuse and bursitis is named different for the different locations. Like you have subscapular bursitis, you have subacromial, uh, olecranon, uh, infrapatellar, depending on where the synovial joint is swollen, that's how it's going to be named. Um, you want to do passive range of motion with clients like that. Like I said, they don't do the moving, you do the movement for them. However, you really have to be careful and wait until the acute inflammation is down. Um, if you want to work around these areas, you want to, if there's no chronic or acute inflammation, you want to keep that pain threshold like a three on a scale from uh, one to 10. You want to keep it very minimal, like a three. You don't want to go above that because they, you know, you could do more damage too. So that would be bursitis, inflammation of the bursas, dislocation and subluxations. So dislocation is a temporary, temporary displacement of the bones. So that means that it comes off, there's no contact like the uh, glenohumeral joint, like if it's dislocated, there's no contact, it comes completely off. A subluxation would be like maybe it's dislocated from this side, but there's still some attachment on this side left. A lot of these are due to trauma or, you know, injuries or a, a blow. This is common with sports. Uh, their uh, joint movement is contraindicated, so you do not want to do any passive range of motion or anything like that with uh, dislocations or subluxation, subluxations. You don't want to do any range of motion with, with any client that you, um, you have to wait until it is healed. This is for a doctor to diagnose, not for you. So if they think that they have it, please refer them out and wait until they are completely healed. So now we move to fractures. There's different types of fractures. There's complete, incomplete, open or closed. And open, it means that it, it went through the skin. Closed means that the fracture did not go through the skin. Uh, complete is when the bone completely breaks. And uh, incomplete is where, you know, like the green fractures where you just, um, it's just kind of splintered. So again, you do not want to do any range of motion or any movement to anybody that has a fracture. You can give a massage, you know, uh, to the full body, except eliminating or not working the area that's in a cast. You have to wait until they're off a cast. And once they're off a cast and completely healed, then you really do want to go and work the muscles because they've been, you know, uh, traumatized and you want to get that blood flowing. So that would be good to give a massage after they've had fractures and after they've removed, um, you know, their uh, cast. If you do have a client with a cast, you want to make sure that you elevate it. You know, prop them up with pillows, whether it's their leg or their arm, just prop it up with pillows, hopefully above heart rate so it doesn't hurt too much, especially at the beginning, you know, and you want to, again, keep the massage with a slow flow. You don't want to increase too much blood flow to that area or near that area because it will cause, you know, some pain. So maybe just a very light, relaxing massage to anybody that has a fracture. Uh, ganglion cyst is next, and that's a, a pouch filled with synovial fluid. Uh, I'm sure some of you have had this, you know, they're common in the hands, like with hairdressers or people that do a lot of movement, you know, even uh, computer work. It looks like a pea size, or it can be as big as, you know, as, as a nickel. And it's really, really hard, and you touch it and it moves, moves around. Usually, it can, it can dissolve by itself. However, uh, some people, I know one of my clients had to have surgery for it to remove it. So 
Um, one of the things that you know that you want to do is keep the client comfortable. You don't want to massage directly on it. You might want to massage, you know, around, and um, just keep the level again at a three, four, nothing more than that. It is common in the wrist, the hands, the ankles, the knees. Um, it is the cause is un unknown, but they think that it has to do with repetitive motion. Uh, so you you like I said, you don't want to work directly on the ganglion because you could burst it so stay away from that one and uh kyphosis oh no i'm sorry i missed gout sorry let me go back gout is a type of arthritis uh caused by an elevation of uric acid this is usually common people that eat a lot of red meat or drink beer you know the uric acid levels go out go up and uh, it's very painful it usually happens on the toe on the big toe and it's a, gets inflamed and red so you don't want to work on that because let me tell you they can't even handle a sheet when they have a flare-up of gout i had a client who i care for deeply who one time called me i gotta tell you this funny story called me up one time he says he was very calm very very calm he goes oh i need to reschedule my appointment because you know i'm having a uh, a heart attack and that's what I heard I said I heard heart attack and he sounded so calm so I'm just gonna stay home and I'll give you a, a call in a couple of weeks and here I am freaking out I was like what he's having a heart attack and he sounds so calm and he's he's not going to the doctor or anything because he says oh I know what to do and then I called him up and he goes no I'm having a gout gout attack not a heart attack so anyway I just you know we still laugh about that sometimes that be careful what you hear because that really stressed me out. I think he was having a heart attack. So gout attack is swelling of the big toe. It's the buildup of, of the uric acid in the joint. You want to make sure and keep your client comfortable, especially when they're prone. You want to put a bolster by their ankles so that their big toe does not touch the table. Because like I said, sometimes they can't even handle the the sheet so it usually affects the uh, metatarsophalangeal joint so it's it's you know there's nothing really much you can do until the inflammation has gone down you know maybe to massage it gently but again if it's acute inflammation you stay off of it so next will be the kyphosis and that's a curvature of the uh of the thoracic spine and that's the the hunchback you know the hunchback up here that's getting to be more common now with people that are always looking down which i've had this beef for the longest time with students when they i would see like some of my kids and grandkids when they were going to school carrying those big backpacks and the weight wasn't not evenly distributed between the shoulders so they would hunch you know they would carry it with the shoulders so this gives you kyphosis which is um you know it can start being painful as you get older and so it's caused by bad posture and by injuries, previous injuries to the, you know, to the cervicals or the thoracic um, spine. So you want to make sure that if you have a client that has severe, you know, kyphosis, that you prop them up with pillows because it is painful. They might not be able to lay on their back. They might be able to go, you know, sideways, you know, sideline position. So this is more common seen in the elderly. However, I'm serious. I'm seeing it more now with younger people, you know, always looking down, you know, the uh, the bursa start, you know, putting pressure against the vertebrae from you, the pressure looking up. So make sure that you remind your clients, you know, to keep, you know, their face, like their computer ergonomics is so important, guys, the way they have their computer set up, their screen right in front of them. You know, I'll, I'll go into this real quick is that, your head approximately weighs around 10 pounds. However, that's when the C1 and C2 are holding it up. You know, if you're straight, your head should be held up by the by the C1 and C2, the atlas and the axis, which is the number one and two of the uh, cer uh, cervical. And however, if you deviate even just a half an inch from that, you know, where it's not C1 and C2 holding it up, then if you deviate from that, your head doubles in weight. So if it weighs 10 pounds, now it becomes 20 pounds and it's being held up by the muscles. 
So that's why posture is so important. You know, when you're standing in anatomical position, you know, your skeletal system will help you, you know, uh, your posture will, you know, help you keep, keep your, keep your uh, muscles in the right place. It'll hold you up. But if you deviate from that, then it's the muscles that take over and that causes specifically one of the things that it may cause will be the kyphosis where your, you know, your neck is jotting forward. So now lower doses is something similar to that, but lower doses is in the lumbar, lumbar spine. Your uh, curvature is forward. So your hips are f tilted forward so that your back, your lumbar area is pushed back. That's the one that gives you a big booty. You know, the big booty where it's sticking out where you can almost put a plate on their, you know, on the back of their, their booty. So it's usually, it's a hurt, you know, usually cause or may cause herniated discs because your pelvis is so tilted forward, rotated forward that it sticks out your, your lumbar area. It's common with women, you know, with pregnancy, people that are very overweight and their abdominals are weak. This is why it's so important that when you go to the, you know, work out that you work your internal and external oblique that, you know, give you a natural girdle in your abdomen, your rectus abdominis and your transverse abdominis, which is your deepest of the abdominal walls. So it's really mainly the uh, external internal oblique. So that will help you from preventing the lower doses, you know, from that uh, forward tilt of the pelvis. So um, again, if your client has a severe lumbar curvature, you want to make sure that you position them in a position that's comfortable for them. They might not be able to lay supine for very long. You definitely have to have a pillow, you know, behind their knees. And a lot of times the bolster is not enough because I know my bolster is only like four inches. So usually when they have really uh, severe lower doses, I put a pillow, which is a little bit higher. You know, it's about 18 inches, you know, I mean, not, not 18 inches, I'm sorry, about eight inches high. So no, not 18 inches, guys. <laughs> so anyway, uh, just be sensitive to any of these. You know, like I said, you can always... Talk on the phone with your client before they come in. Find out any of these. And uh, that's it for part one. We'll tackle part two in a few days. I hope you enjoyed this. And until the next time, create a great day. And let me know if you like this better or with the whiteboard. Leave me comments. Thank you.